All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the Commonwealth Universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Saints of Salvation, book number three in Peter F. Hamilton's Salvation Trilogy. Let's see, it's called, yeah, the Salvation Sequence Trilogy. It's what it's technically called. This is book three. I have so far reviewed book one, Salvation. I've also reviewed book two, Salvation Lost. I think I reviewed book one two years ago. This one about last year. And now we're to book three. And um, if you want to watch the reviews of these two books, all you need to do is type in my last name, Durfee, the title of the book, and type that into your YouTube search bar, and the video review will show up magically upon your uh, television screen or computer screen or telephone, cell phone, or whatever it is you're using to watch these videos. Anyway, let's talk about The Saints of Salvation, book number three. Um, now, this trilogy is not part of Peter F. Hamilton's Commonwealth Universe. Now, I've got a ton of of Peter F. Hamilton books, and most of them, if not all of them, take place in his Commonwealth universe. And I've got all, all of his books up here. I'll just kind of pan over here and show you. There's a stack of them, and then there's another stack of them. But those books are all part of the Commonwealth universe. They're all kind of tied together. These three books are not. What are they about? Um, well, book one starts out, we'll just give a little brief description of each book. Book one, Salvation, starts out, um, you know, there's stargates. That's how people do time travel, not time travel. Uh, faster than light travel. There's stargates. They use stargates. Now, they also have starships, but they use the stargates more for the time travel. Now, um, one of these starships crashes, right, a long time ago. It crashes. Um, it's light years away. Uh, there's a mystery of why it crashed, and th in this book they send a group of investigators out to find out why it crashed. This book is sort of about a set of, it's kind of like tells you about the life history of all these people that are on this investigative trip on this starship, sort of get the background of all of them and get their stories, get to know them. That's kind of what this one was um, about. Um, and then in this one, there's also, you know, we've got this group of investigative people going out to find out about this crashed starship. Well, there's also sort of an infiltrator, an alien infiltrator in this group who we don't know who it is. Kind of like in Battlestar Galactica, the modern Battlestar Galactica, how they have Cylons that look like humans. It's kind of what we're dealing with there. That's kind of the plot of that story. Reminded me a lot of the book Hyperion by... Uh, uh, Dan Simmons. Now, Salvation Lost, this is kind of like got, you know, multiple timelines going on. Like, we, get, we, see, we see the story from like 20,000 years into the future, and then we also pulled back into the present time, which is, gosh, it's about, I think this, these things take place in the year 22, yeah, they're about the year 2200. So about 150, no, 170, 180 years from now. Um, that's one timeline we're following. And then the other timeline is like 20,000 years or some odd years beyond that and the far, far future. So we're following these two different timelines that kind of interweave a little bit. And we've gotten, we're talking a lot about God and religion and the alien, and the aliens that are sort of um, in this, um, there's sort of a crime syndicate slash um, alien race that um, they're kind of like religious extremists, these aliens. And that's kind of what we're getting in book two. And then we get to book three, which sort of ties all of this stuff together. You know, um, Peter F. Hamilton, deal, when his science fiction space opera novels, they've got all of the starships and faster than light travel and people with blasters and all the Star Wars sort of action and adventure. But they're also wrapped around these really hard science fiction ideas, just these grand, huge way far out ideas, just mind-blowing ideas. And so all of this is kind of coming to culmination in this third book. And I really like this series. Just, it's mind-blowing in that way. And 
Rather than like accidentally talk about spoilers for this book, I think I'm just going to read the back jacket copy to give you an idea of what this book was about. And it's a very rousing conclusion to the trilogy. Rousing? Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, it was good enough. Um, so anyway, um, this is uh, where we're, I kind of left. I kind of gave you a brief description of these two books, and now we're left with book number three. Humanity is struggling to hold out against a hostile takeover by an alien race that claims to be on a religious mission to bring all sentient life to its god at the end of time. But while billions of cocooned humans fill the holds of the, the Oleix, the Oleix are the um, aliens, O-L-Y-I-X, while billions of cocooned humans fill the holds of the Oleix's deadly starships, um, humankind is playing an even longer game that the aliens may have anticipated, from an ultra-secret spy mission, which I've talked about, to one of the grandest battles ever seen, no strategy is off the table. Will a plan millennia will a plan that's been a millennia in the making finally be enough to defeat the seemingly unstoppable enemy? And what secrets are the Oleix truly hiding in their most zealously protected stronghold? Um Yeah, it's one of those things where are the is this religion that the aliens believe in? Is it real? I mean, are they worshiping the true gods? And is this all this crazy stuff that's happening? to humanity from the year 2200 all the way for 20,000s of years it's like just it seems like this this engagement with this alien enemy is is a long game like a 20,000 year long game that's being played out throughout these books as we bounce between these two timelines and as they sort of converge together um it's just quite simply amazing i don't know that just having been a writer myself to be able to do books that are this vast in scope, in time, in time travel, in light speed travel, and just with such huge ideas that Stephen or that Peter Hamilton puts in these books. And it's not just these books, it's all of his Commonwealth novels that I showed you too. They're just mind blowingly big and um I don't know how a person can do it. I mean, it's genius level writing and thinking beyond what I can do. That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, I write books about knights and swords. It's about as deep as it gets. Um, this stuff is crazy good. Okay, so I give Saints of Salvation a 9.5 out of 10. Again, this is a great great trilogy and we've now reviewed all of the books and i've read them all and i've liked them all and that's that